yesterday reminded me of uh, that one of the sacred rights we have is to be able to go out and cast our votes. And remember that we all have an obligation to accept the legitimacy of these elections. I was talking to Terry to congratulate him today. He got 600,000 more votes than any Democrat ever has gotten. We brought out every Democrat about there was more votes than ever has been cast for a Democratic incumbent. Good evening, black people and all allies fighting for black liberation, black prosperity, and black joy. I'm Charles Blow, and welcome to Prime, a state that President Biden won by 10 points last year. This year is seeing red. Republican Glenn Youngkin defeated Terry McAuliffe for governor of Virginia, the first Republican to do so since 2009. GOP candidate Winsome Sears also won the lieutenant governor's race, making history as the state's first black woman elected to the position. Sears' tie-breaking vote in the state Senate, where Democrats hold a thin majority and no seats were up for a re-election this year, may be a key factor in Youngkin's policy goals. By the looks of it tonight, Republicans are counting their winning streak and are poised to reclaim power they lost to Democrats in the state two years ago. Jason Mayorkas defeated Democratic incumbent Herring earlier tonight, according to the Associated Press, becoming Virginia's first Latino attorney general and first Hispanic elected statewide. Republicans have also won at least 50 seats in the House of Delegates, breaking Democratic control over the chamber. There are several races remaining, which are still too early to call, but Republican leaders say they are confident they have taken control of the House. Democrats won the House in 2017 and took control of the full legislature in 2019. Now they may be losing that power. And all of the policies they passed, like expanding abortion access, anti-discrimination protections for LGBTQ people, and expanded early voting, may be staring down an uncertain fate. Joining me now to discuss is Joe Madison, host of Sirius XM's The Joe Madison Show, and Basil Smichael. Democratic strategist and former executive director of the New York State Democratic Party. Joe, what do you make of what happened in Virginia last night? Well, clearly, uh, if you go southwest in the state of Virginia, it went heavy red. There's no if ands, buts about it. Number two, um, Terry did not near, do nearly as well as Biden had done. But let me just simply tell you what the playbook for Yunkin is all about. Uh, the Republican messaging in, in, this, in this DMV area was very simple. They know how to twist uh, the issues. They know how to manipulate their message. They were great at dog whistles. They used code words. They j and then in some cases, they just came right out and appealed to race and uh, gender uh, of, of fears. And then this bogus issue of critical race theory uh, caught on. But um, their margin, and it was a close race, but I tell you, no one likes to say this, Charles, but that margin of victory was due in large part uh, to Trumpers, even though he kept Trump at arm's length, but it was also due in large part, I guarantee you this margin of victory was due in large part uh, to these white supremacists that still permeate throughout the Commonwealth of Virginia. I bet you if you remove them, mm -hmm. because you know they didn't vote for the Democrat, uh, it would have even been mm -hmm. a closer race and maybe Terry would have come out on top. So, Basil, how much do you believe that that what happened in Virginia was because of the tactics of Yunkin? And how much do you believe was because of the strategy that the Democrats used that lost? Well, I agree with everything that was just said about uh, Yunkin. Those dog whistles work. Um, they're, they're dog whistles for a reason. Look, we can talk about critical race theory. We can talk about vaccine mandates and vaccine hesitancy. All that falls under the umbrella of this notion of individual freedoms and states' rights. We heard that for decades. We know how pernicious that is going back decades in, a, in our country and in, in, with respect to the lives of Black folk. 
Um, but we know that the Republicans are going to do this. That's their game, right? We know that's their strategy, and it has been for a very long time. So I'm not surprised that Youngkin resorted to that. He even talked about banning certain books. Um, so you had, you know, parents and educators sort of uh, uh, getting on board with that. Um, what, what I'm concerned about, I'm not worried, but I am really concerned. This was a low turnout election in many respects across the country, even though uh, Joe Biden is right about Terry's numbers. What concerns me, though, is that if you look at suburbs, if you look at New York suburbs, where Democrats actually lost quite substantially, there has been a, a change in how white women are voting in this election, which portends concerns for the next one. Um, and I think the Democratic strategy was flawed. We don't, we don't uh, have this, the fervor, the anger, the energy that Republicans have. The political brain is mm -hmm. an emotional brain. And we don't speak with emotion. We try to become very cerebral. And that does not work because voters go to the polls when, they're, when they feel there's an urgency, where they're afraid or they're angry or they're proud. And we don't speak in those terms. And that's what Democrats need to start doing and giving some meat, meaning we need to get this bill passed. Because if we have nothing to tell voters come next year about what we've done, it doesn't matter whether we save the country money or not, we haven't delivered on what we promised. And I think just that <laughs> basic strategy is important. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to, and, and Joe, you, you know, how much Charles, is this a, uh, my, my show, they, go for look, it. you know, let's just wrap this up in, in, into some just down earth language. Democrats have to learn how to kick ass. And and, yeah, and the they reality sure. is they, they and that's exactly what, what he's saying. Um, you know, somebody said, you know, uh, Republicans bring a gun to the fight, we bring butter knives. And then we sit up and then we argue with each other. Let me take man, I'm telling you, Youngkin sat there and pulled a coalition together of independence, of suburban women, and then he added these white supremacists. I mean, think about his, um, his Charles, his um, uh, uh, celebrity, I mean, his victory speech. And they started chanting. Uh, what was that about Bannon? Uh, uh, Brandon, Brandon. We know that was a cold oh, word <laughs> that they've been using to, to stoke racial fear. And he never once said, no, we don't do that. Don't do that. See, a Democrat would have said, no, let's not go there. Let's be mm -hmm. nice. These Republicans and Joe Biden needs to understand something. This is not the same Republican Party that he grew up with in the United States Senate. Uh, these folks are mean, they're real, and they're sticking together. And we're fighting mm -hmm. each other. Basil, you know, the, the idea of stoking white racial anxiety has worked, as you, I think you were pointing out, for decades. Why was Terry McAuliffe basically running an election, a campaign about the last election? He was running an anti-Trump campaign when, in fact, Yonkin had moved on to the new hot topic of the day, false as it may be. But the new hot topic of the day was stoking white racial anxiety around the idea of critical race theory, which in fact is about teaching race, which in fact is about whether or not parents have the right to shield their children, their white children, from feeling any unease or anxiety learning a true history. Why was Terry McAuliffe so caught up in running the last cycle's campaign? Right. Well, I mean, it's a great question. And the, the answer is, I don't know. Uh, that's not a strategy that I would have chosen. We did that and it worked. Joe Biden became president. We were able to win seats in the House. We were able to get the Senate back. We were able to get a Democratic majority in the House largely by winning the suburbs in places we had not really won before and by getting a lot of those suburban white women to be able to support Democrats this time around. Why he chose to relitigate that campaign, I have no idea, because the truth is, in addition to all that was said about white supremacy, critical race theory, all of that, there are actually some real kitchen table issues that we did not discuss, like gas prices going up substantially, right? The supply chain problems, so when folks walk into their stores, some of their shelves are bare. And yes, and we can talk about vaccine mandates and vaccine hesitancy, because there are a lot of 
uh, firefighters and police officers that work in cities like New York and live in the suburbs who may not get paid next mm -hmm. year uh, because they decided not to get vaccinated. Whether We can argue whether that's right or wrong, but the truth is that is what voters right. are talking about. So why we didn't address it, I have no idea. Joe, while she was campaigning for McCullough, Stacey Abrams warned voters that Virginia could become the new Georgia or the new Texas in regards to voting rights and abortion laws. Do you think that that's true? Yeah, oh, I think I think that is true uh, to, to be quite uh, to be quite candid. Now, I you know, again, I'm trying to be an optimist uh, optimist here, but I got to tell you, Charles, uh, what concerns me once again is is that d Democrats in Washington and 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 particularly Joe Biden, he's got to you know when you think about it. Joe Biden, you know, you heard what's his name of uh, the Congressman Clyburn say, we know Joe, Joe knows us. I don't know if Joe really knows us. You know, Clinton had people around him like um, uh, like Vernon Jordan, who didn't need anything, uh, but would tell him to his face what he is or is not doing right. I got to tell you, I don't know about you, but Joe Biden hasn't been on my show. I don't know if he's been on your show, and to be quite yes, candid, <laughs> uh, I don't know how well he really does know us. And he, you know, he talks the talk, but, you know, maybe Joe Biden, if they want 22 to be different than this off-year election, maybe he ought to show up at Sylvia's and Ben's Chili Bowl <laughs> and, uh, and, and, you know, and, and find somebody who doesn't need anything from, from him, Charles, and that will tell him what he really needs to know. Because let me tell you, the other problem was black folks didn't show out. See, Stacy, she knows Georgia, but black folks showed out in Georgia. They didn't mm -hmm. show out True. in Virginia. That's see, so so it's based on she's right. If black folk in Virginia do what black folk did in Georgia, but the reality is mm -hmm. they right. didn't, and and so. It can come true, but it's only, and the only, and let me tell you, to hear Joe Biden say uh, this this morning, uh, what was it? Um, they want us to get something, people want us to get something done. No stuff. <laughs> you know, you know right, get the right, John Lewis right. voting bill done. Get the freedom, uh, the voting freedom done. Hell, you put that on the back burner. And that one is one of the most important things, and you're a historian. You, you know very well the first thing that happened after the first Reconstruction was they came after our vote. They came after our vote, right. and that's what they're doing uh, in, in, in with the second Reconstruction we're going through. Mm. Mm. Joe Madison and Basil Smichael, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Great conversation.